Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Concept to Commercialization, Thermo Fisher's Unique Approach to Rapidly Advancing Your Antibody and Protein Therapeutics. I am Marie Stone of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Thermo Fisher Scientific. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. This webinar is educational and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education window at the bottom of your screen to obtain your credits. I'd like to now welcome our speakers, Steve Lewis, Senior Product Manager, Gene Synthesis and Synthetic Biology at Thermo Fisher Scientific, and Jeff Howe, Director Scientific and Technical Affairs, Pharma Services at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Steve and Jeff, you may now begin your presentations. Great. Thank you, Maria. I really appreciate you hosting us for today. Uh, I will be doing the first half of the presentation, and I'm very excited to be here for today. First, I'd like to talk a little bit just about Thermo Fisher in general. Uh, we are, of course, a very large organization, but hopefully today through this webinar we'll, we'll help with navigating it and I, really seeing how small and integrated our company truly is. We take a lot of pride holistically across the company in our, in our mission to uh, enable our customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. And today, for our presentation, we're going to move into talking about the agenda. Uh, the first half will be primarily about um, services provided within Thermo Fisher Scientific for uh, early stage discovery, in particular antibodies. And we will talk about why starting with the gene or gene synthesis is the fastest way to move ultimately into the clinic um, from R&D into commercial scale production. Uh, so with the agenda here, we're going to start uh, really at the beginning of the therapeutic journey and partnering with us. We're going to talk about uh, optimization of your gene as well as uh, very advanced next generation gene synthesis as well as advanced protein expression techniques. And then also how you move from going from selecting your candidates it, from R&D or in the R&D environment to ultimately production. From there, my partner Jeff will be speaking about strategies for accelerating your timeline to clinic, mitigating risk, as well as building a foundation for success and how to get started uh, with Thermo Fisher right after this presentation. So to provide a little bit of context, Thermo Fisher Scientific has been working in the infectious diseases world for, for quite a long time. And we wanted to start here in terms of providing context for uh, today's presentation because we have a long history working within uh, infectious disease. Uh, starting in 2000, uh, we had a very early uh, infectious disease response effort that we worked on in terms of HIV, all the way through the mid-2000s and all the way to today. And of course, you can read the whole timeline. And if you're watching this as a recorded presentation, you can pause it um, and take a look at all of the different details that we've been working on for more than 20 years in this space. Um, but I'd like to highlight 2020 and 2021, where we really did have an impact, a significant impact, partnering with many companies around the world in terms of of our response to SARS-CoV-2. Uh, this is a very rapid and very serious and very interesting time, uh, not, not just for us in the biotech space, but really globally. Uh, and it was very challenging and also rewarding to work on a lot of these early stage activities in terms of pandemic response. And so if you have any questions about some of our activities in that space or how we contributed to uh, the 
development of some of the vaccines and therapeutics as an organization. We'd be happy to talk about that. We also have some materials that we'd be happy to send after this presentation uh, to explain a bit more in depth uh, related to how we've worked it toward developing critical vaccines at unprecedented velocities. So for today, we're going to start really talking about the early steps of therapeutics and vaccine development, starting with the early stage discovery and research through development, clinical trials, and then ultimately commercial scale production. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Thermo Fisher, of course, is a large organization, but Today, our focus for our webinar is really to show how you can go from idea all the way through commercial production in a relatively seamless way working with our, with our groups in, the, in Thermo Fisher Scientific. And for the first part of today, we are going to focus on uh, the early discovery and research aspect as well as development before moving into uh, the clinical trials aspect as well as commercial uh, production with our partner, Jeff. So today, starting in the early discovery and research, we really focus on the idea of using recombinant DNA based just on sequence information at the very beginning to optimize your protein production. Within our production organization, we do have the ability to rapidly create DNA uh, from a de novo gene synthesis processes. But believe it or not, we actually start uh, in a digital way. We start with a proprietary algorithm that really helps us to optimize the gene expression uh, or the protein expression resulting from your gene synthesis. And so I'll talk about some of those services today, but in particular, I'd like to start by talking about the discovery workflow. What you're seeing on the screen is what we believe to be a very reasonable timeline for starting at the R&D scale um, or producing what we refer to as research use only uh, targets for protein production. And so we start on the left at the project design level, where we really begin with just the electronic sequence design, going through optimizing the, the gene ultimately to result in higher yields of protein production. And then we can actually do the DNA synthesis as part of that. And we will do the prototyping in-house and send you your uh, gene of desire. And if you'd like, we can actually take it all the way through uh, subcloning plasmid production as well as proteins. And at any step along the way, at any, any point in this timeline, you really do have the ability to choose what's relevant to your organization and your needs at a given time. You don't need to go through the entire process to work with with our group, you can truly pick which aspects of this continuum that are most relevant for you at the time of project design. And so for us today, the, the items that are highlighted in red, gene optimization, gene synthesis, and proteins are the ones that we're going to be focusing on uh, to in particular talk about how you can move from R&D to production in the fastest way possible. First, just for a little bit of context, you have uh, in the protein expression space, very popular host systems that are used for expression. And so you can do cell-free expression, which does not have any uh, kind of living components as associated with it. You can do bacterial expression uh, through E. coli, or uh, you can do yeast expression, insect expression, or mammalian expression. And we'll talk about uh, primarily the complex proteins that you can make via uh, mammalian expression. And we will talk about how we view that within our organization uh, to ultimately provide you with the highest quality gene, uh, proteins developed from genes in the fastest amount of time. So as I mentioned, starting out with the mammalian cell lines that are typically used for protein expression, particularly in therape therapeutics development, you have two that are uh, the most common here, the HEC293, or the human embryonic kidney cells, and CHO cells, the Chinese hamster ovary cells. And the benefits of mammalian cell lines is 
that you have the ability to really uh, do post-translational modifications uh, as it compares to using another type of uh, expression system. And that's really important when you're thinking about developing uh, proteins like monoclonal antibodies or um, bispecific or tri-specific uh, applications because uh, the reality is the mammalian cell lines are the way to go in terms of getting the highest yield in uh, the fastest amount of time at the highest quality. And different cells, whether it's the HEX-293 or CHO cells, uh, have different uses at different times, and we have that flexibility within our organization to be able to, one, not only offer both, but two, as an outsourced service, we will also make recommendations about which ones to go through for that optimal protein expression. And so, uh, in terms of transfection strategies, uh, we have a couple of options that, that you can use here within our GeneArt services. And GeneArt is the name of our organization who really focuses on that R&D range uh, of protein expression from gene to protein. And so our, our approach to it from a strategic perspective is to have transient expression for four to 14 days, um, which is how long it, it can ultimately take depending on the sequence that you are trying to uh, design and then ultimately express. You go through a high efficiency transfection as part of the process uh, through expression and then ultimately protein production. Uh, so that's very fast, right? And we're trying to talk about the difference here between what is transient expression compared to what is stable expression. Stable expression really takes uh, months in a lot of cases. You're trying to get a stable cell line at the end of your process so that you can ultimately, in a reproducible and scalable way, uh, make the protein that you're trying to make as, as your target on various scales and timelines at different times of, of the project that you have in mind. So to kind of summarize, the way that I like to think about transient expression versus stable expression is that transient expression is really when you have a lot of squishiness or a lot of uncertainty around kind of what your gene sequence is and how it's going to express when it gets into a host cell system. And then uh, after that, if you find a candidate that's kind of working or you find a sequence uh, and ultimately clone and then plasmid that works for you and works at various scales because at GeneArt we can scale up from 24 well plates all the way up to 25 uh, liter production scales. At the higher end, you really do start to get a greater sense of, okay, here's what stable cell line development would look like. And that can take months. And this really truly isn't comparing the two. It really is that transient expression, in a way, from our perspective, precedes that stable cell line development. And the fastest way to do it when working with our group, GeneArt Services, is to go through our outsourced transient expression workflow, which can be as quick as four days or as long as 14 days, depending on the sequence and the approach to actually doing the expression. So to kind of summarize, at the very beginning, GeneArt will be there for most of the uncertainty. That's, that's where we specialize, is when you don't know what's going to happen, call GeneArt. That, that is definitely where we excel in that transient ex protein expression space. Now, uh, focusing on the discovery workflow here, we're going to start at the very beginning, right? Going from project design through gene optimization and then ultimately to uh, proteins at the very end of the process. But let's start right at the very beginning. When you are starting off, we at GeneArt will ask you to send us a sequence associated with uh, what you are trying to ultimately express. Uh, we have a proprietary patented algorithm known as Gene Optimizer. Uh, it's our technology that really takes into account many parameters to optimize the mammalian coding region. And this allows us to optimize uh, expression 
to ha result in the highest yields that you can you can get right now today. We're very excited about this uh, unique process that we have to optimizing gene sequences. And when coupled with our production processes, we've seen very strong increases in terms of yield uh, resulting from the expression that that we do uh, following the optimization. And to talk a bit about uh, really just our world-class performance in this regard, we have a couple of studies that have been published um, and, and we can get access to them. And you can actually just look them up at, as well. They're, they're available, but if you need a link, feel free to reach out to your Thermo Fisher partner to be able to uh, receive a copy. We have basically compared within this study uh, kinase protein expression. And our gene optimizer software consistently provided higher expression levels compared to the wild type gene, um, as high as 200% and as low as 25% expression. We have a very high reliability with this algorithm. It's very unique. We have some really talented folks within our R&D organization who worked very, very hard um, at the uh, molecular level to really understand what makes sense when you're building an algorithm to optimize that protein expression. Uh, so for those, uh, those proteins that were tested in this study, the technology did provide the, the best results out of, out of the different studies and uh, no other optimization algorithm. And that's what you can see in the one, two, three, four, five in, in each of the studies uh, showed consistent results. Um, and, and you can see in the paper here, the gene art sections, uh, just exactly how much the express uh, the optimization how much of an impact the optimization actually had and it truly does outperform all other algorithms on the market today this is a selected uh, slide from another study that we that we posted a, as well or we published as well um, where we looked at different protein expression types. So the last one we focused primarily on kinase proteins, but this really is a study that was done uh, very in depth to demonstrate that different types of proteins also benefit from being optimized through the gene optimizer. Uh, whether it's transcription factors to ribosomal proteins, the membrane proteins, the cytokines, you can see the amount of increase that the optimized gene resulted in compared to the wild type. Uh, and it's, it's pretty impressive, um, even in situations when you are, let's say, not with the wild type getting any expression at all. If you look at the bottom one, the cytokines, uh, in that particular case, the IL-2 only expressed in the event of the optimization uh, in, in terms of relative expression. And, and that's just a testament to how powerful the gene optimizer algorithm truly is uh, within the gene art environment. And then, as I mentioned, when it's coupled with our production processes, you're truly getting the highest chance of the best yield uh, that you can get at the highest quality as well. So moving into a poll question here, uh, if you do have a de novo gene synthesis project that is currently in process, whether you're doing it in-house or outsourced to another provider, when do you anticipate you'll require protein production services? Give it a couple more seconds to answer. All right, great. And now that we've done that poll question, I'd like to move into talking about the synthesis and expression uh, part of our presentation. Again, staying within the, the gene, gene art family within Thermo Fisher Scientific, we're moving on to really that next step, the actual synthesis itself, now that, that your genes have been optimized. 
So we perform really next generation gene synthesis with within our Thermo Fisher Scientific Gene Art group. We, of course, as we mentioned, started out with gene optimization through uh, basically bioinformatics uh, and uh, what today would be considered machine learning processes. Um, you move into oligosynthesis, then gene assembly, then cloning, sequencing, and final documentation. Uh, everything I just went over really truly is a uh, sequential process and the process that we follow within our group to make sure that you're ending up with not just ex uh, a, a cloned gene, but we're really verifying it. We're making sure that uh, you are getting increased reliability, even with a shorter turnaround time that, that, we're, that we're able to achieve through our processes in-house. Um, we are able to do very high throughput. That's that's something that's fairly uh, impressive, at least from my perspective, in, in terms of our production partners uh, at our manufacturing site. They're very fast. They've been doing this for 20 years, and uh, we have a really excellent team who not only takes the time to do the production, but will also work to the point that they can troubleshoot things. They, we do protein production all day, every day, and that's a unique thing about this team. They're very, very experienced, and they are able to really go from that optimized algorithm to the express gene, and then, uh, or excuse me, to the, to the gene synthesis, and then uh, the clone gene, and making sure that if there are any troubles along the way, that we will do our due diligence to make sure that you are getting the highest sequence accuracy uh, possible. And so all of these things combined, doing all of that in-house, especially starting with the gene synthesis itself, um, it really allows you to go, okay, Ultimately, at the end of my project, I'm trying to get an express, uh, express protein, antibody, whatever it is. And you start to wonder, okay, well, how can I increase my chances for the highest yield possible? And that's what we mean by next generation gene synthesis from our perspective is really starting at the electronic level or the, the digital, uh, from a digital perspective where you optimize the sequence before even starting with any of the biology. And then after that gene synthesis, you have the ability to move into bioproduction with a bit more confidence. And so after the gene synthesis, uh, you can really move into an expression plasmid and then do actual protein expression as well. Um, you can see in the box that is, uh, has a square around it right now. These are really the next steps in that process. On our way toward protein production, uh, you will go from that clone gene to an expression plasmid before ultimately doing the expression. As we mentioned before, uh, we really champion that gene optimizer algorithm to increase your protein yield from your uh, expression plasmid. Uh, we have a lot of design flexibility in how you want to do your plasmid preparation, uh, which is very high quality, and we do it all in-house. And that's the great thing about working with the, with the gene art group within Thermo Fisher Scientific is because you're starting your journey with the same group all the way up to getting that protein expression step done, along the way, you can have full control over how your process is going. So starting from the sequence, like I had already mentioned, all the way through at this point, the uh, expression plasmid or the plasmid preparation gives you that ability to have uniquely full control as opposed to if you were to send in your clone genes to uh, an, another provider, which you may not have control over the different steps of the process, one unique thing about the gene art group is because we do all of these services in-house for our partners that provide the unique ability to control the different aspects of the process as you progress through it. And then moving into expression, uh, we do have a number of flexible expression scales. As I mentioned, you can go as uh, small as 96 well plates. 
um, for some of our more high throughput or small scale protein expression uh, services. A lot of our partners will start in the 100 to 300 milliliter range in terms of their uh, expression after, after the transfection. And as I mentioned, when you're looking toward therapeutic and uh, ultimate and vaccine development, a lot of the time we're going to be recommending or you're going to be uh, it coming to us with those mammalian expression systems, which in this case, uh, we really prefer the XP293 and XP Cho. But we will also do uh, insect expressions. There are certain proteins that do express uh, better within those SF9 uh, insect cells. And so that's something just to be aware of that we offer it. But truly where we excel is in that transient protein expression of those mammalian uh, expression systems. For the right part of the slide, I'll let you read it. I'm going to get into more detail here in a second, but our approach overall, uh, if you look at the bottom, the bottom line there, our approach to bioproduction is really collaborative. We want to be a strategic partner for you. We have a project management team who will help you with getting up to speed. Our local manufacturing team is also co-located co with some of our project management team and some of our uh, sales support and customer support staff. And so that benefit of doing all of it in-house with GeneArt is one great way that you can really drive that performance through working with us through that entire process. So moving into the next poll question, would you like to receive a quote for an early stage protein production project? I'll give you a few more seconds to answer. Great. And so for the last part of, of this presentation, and I really do appreciate all of your time today, uh, we are going to talk about the how we ultimately increase protein yield through the actual expression uh, and uh, purification processes that we offer within Thermo Fisher Gene Art. As I mentioned, it, you know, there's a lot of advantages to using the XP293 and XP Cho mammalian systems that really express more protein per cell. That's what everyone's trying to get to. How can I get the highest yield for, uh, you know, the, the, in the fastest amount of time for the lowest amount of cost? Using these expression systems is a great way to do that. And in our case, you can see in that first red box there, uh, using these expression systems will allow you to have a higher cell density, meaning on a per cell basis, you're going to have higher uh, productivity and a higher efficiency uh, transaction as well. And you can see that uh, the protocol is very easy. It plugs right into the five to seven day workflow that usually uh, goes on when it comes to using the expression systems. But what I want to highlight is when paired with our gene and vector optimization, as I mentioned, more often than not, we are seeing a three to 10 X yield improvement by combining all of these factors. And so you may in certain cases see those benefits on the right, or on the left, but they are enhanced when you combine them with that gene optimization that I that that I mentioned earlier, and it's more reliable and results in a higher yield than you would otherwise get with without doing the gene optimization. And as I mentioned, I really encourage you to take a look at those studies I highlighted earlier. Just a quick bit more explanation in terms of the. Uh, Gibbs, Gibco protein expression systems, they're, they're industry leading. Um, it's likely many of the uh, participants of this call are very familiar with them. Uh, in terms of antibody screening, immunogen production, uh, membrane and intracellular protein expression, 
Uh, on the left, you're going to see HEC293, uh, the cell-based system that can have a protein yield up to one gram per liter uh, in terms of yield. And on the right, XB Cho, uh, you know, really, as far as Cho cells are concerned, another industry-leading cell-based system, you're going to be getting protein yields uh, up to three grams per liter, uh, which in the bioproduction community really is uh, – toward the upper limit of capability, especially if you're getting them on uh, a consistent basis like you would be uh, within working with the gene art framework. A lot of the applications for CHO um, are some of those more advanced, newer applications like bispecifics, other multi-specifics. Um, and then, of course, antibodies are really, uh, you know, monoclonal antibodies with CHO cells. Uh, those, those are really popularized workflows that um, I'm sure many of you on the call are well aware of and experienced with today. And just to highlight a bit about the XBCHO uh, system in terms of the expression levels, uh, it, you know, the tighter in terms of grams per liter, you can see the comparison versus uh, the Freestyle CHO, which is, a, which is another CHO system, the XB293, and then ultimately the XBCHO system. And, and you'll see just a massive increase in terms of expression levels um, comparatively with this XBCHO system. And so it's definitely worth uh, using. We love it in-house at, at GeneArt. We do recommend it for a lot of our mammalian protein expression projects, and we're uh, very interested in helping to identify exactly why this particular cell uh, expression system is, is might be best for your sequence. But again, one of the benefits of working with GeneArt is with all that experience, we can do the exact opposite. We can also tell you when not to use it and when there may be a better alternative um, as well. But more often than not, this XBCHO system, we're, we're very, very uh, big fans of. We highly recommend it. And that's something that we're really, um, really happy to be able to use in-house within the Thermo Fisher um, uh, uh, family of companies. So moving on to the final parts in the R&D uh, scale uh, bioproduction, you know, you're going to be interested in purification and analysis, ultimately. Um, we have a number of ways that we can do purification. Um, we do a lot of them, as you can see in, inside that cell. Um, we're er, in, inside that box there. Um, we're, we're very experienced in this, and we feel very comfortable with it. And in terms of our analysis, we have a number of ways. Some of our standard processes are the SDS page, uh, nanodrop, capillary gel electrophoresis. Um, but we can do some other uh, approaches as well. Um, HPLC, uh, when it comes to size exclusion chromatography. Also, we can and have done um, with a lot of our partners endotoxin detection. Um, that is a process that we do get requested a lot. And it's very important in particular when you're dealing with for example, in certain cases, toxic sequences, which can sometimes happen, but are significantly lower risk when you're starting with that gene optimization process that I mentioned earlier. So just talking a bit about our uh, gene to protein services, the purification approaches, you can see everything in the box there. Um, you know, we've got a number of different chromatography approaches that you can take to purification. We also have different types of affinity tags, but we also do provide unique customization options, which is uh, pretty unique, I would say, to uh, a provider like Thermo Fisher, who does do a lot of proteins, um, oftentimes on a high throughput basis. We will do uh, everything from concentration adjustments um, all the way to things that aren't listed here, um, like choosing custom tubes, for example. Um, you let us know what your needs are, and we will do our best to absolutely help you toward uh, making your project go as smoothly as possible and as quickly as possible. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, we have a lot of different ways. Uh, the filtration and purification approaches that we have are not just one 
one size fits all. Um, so to speak, we understand that every uh, project is unique. And I would go so far as to say we understand it better because a lot of times our partners start at that gene optimization level. So we can see it coming in our production pipeline and really understand when we may or may not run into purification challenges. So that's another benefit of working um, for your entire production workflow at this early discovery stage with our, our gene art services. Here's an example, uh, and this is my second to last slide here, of some of the documentation that you might receive uh, early on working with our uh, gene art services here. We will provide a certificate of analysis results of uh, the chromatography, for, for example. Uh, we really want to make sure that you have a lot of confidence uh, in, in trusting us as your outsourced provider for transient protein expression, for those early services um, that you might be looking at. You know, it's one thing to be able to do it in-house and feel like you have control over every step of the process, but we understand that for some people on this call, that can be cost prohibitive from an equipment perspective or an investment perspective. And so we want to make working with gene art really feel like an extension of your laboratory. We want it to be personalized to you so that we build that trust over time and really can grow with you. We want to help scale with you. Uh, we, you know, value every single one of our customers. It's not that we will just push your proteins through as quickly as possible. We want to treat every single customer that comes to us with the uh, respect that we would have doing all of our projects with our own R&D team. And our manufacturing team, with all of their experience, they, they truly have seen it all. And I can tell you that we're very proud to, to talk about how our team cares so much each and every day about the projects that they work on. And finally, I'd like to just share a little bit of information about uh, upcoming services, and we actually do provide this on a pilot basis right now, the High Throughput XBCHO Expression and Purification Service. Uh, in as fast as 21 days, you can go from sequence all the way through purified protein uh, with that analytical report in either 24 or 96 well played. That's really great for antibody uh, screening. Uh, that's something that we have a lot of partners, a lot of the, a, a lot of the bigger partners that you are probably very familiar with uh, like this service because it allows them to explore a number of targets all at once before ultimately scaling up uh, to higher scales or production volumes. And so, you know, you can save a lot of time, a lot of money. We understand things are getting smaller. Uh, we understand that needs are getting faster, but maintaining the higher uh, quality product that you're used to. And we can say that as we scale down, we are not sacrificing quality in, by any means. And this is one new product offering that we're very excited to have uh, and offer you today. And so finally, I'd like to leave you, uh, before I hand over to my partner Jeff here with this final question, would you like to be contacted by a technical sales specialist uh, to understand more about our protein services? I'll give you a couple more seconds. Great. I would like to pass off to my partner, Jeff, uh, today, representing the Pharma Services Group within Thermo Fisher Scientific. One of our goals today and reasons for doing this webinar is to explain how you can really go from that R&D environment ultimately to commercial scale production. And at GeneArt, we're very proud to be able to take on your earliest stages of research, uh, really when you're not sure what's going to happen, all the way up to the point when you feel comfortable to potentially move into some of those mouse studies or even ultimately into those clinical trials. And so by working with Thermo Fisher Scientific, you get the benefit of that early stage transient protein expression, the discovery services, and then Jeff uh, is going to speak a bit about how you can move quickly into clinic uh, and ultimately to commercial scale production in one seamless, integrated way within the Thermo Fisher framework.
Thank you all. Fantastic. Thanks, Steve. Uh, appreciate the introduction there. Um, so, so I hope everyone's doing well, and uh, let, let's kind of move on uh, from the, the R&D and in, in, into the production of the bioproduction side. Just want to refocus um, the, the, the audience here a little bit. Uh, as Steve kind of presented, uh, going from concept to commercialization uh, it, it's quite a big endeavor, and, and we, we, I just want to try to break this down um, a little bit further um, on the next slide as you move um, out of discovery um, and into development and, and subsequent stages. Um, so, so Thermo Fisher Scientific will continue to be your partner as you move out of that phase, um, and it's really important that uh, we overcome, uh, or once you've overcome some of those development hurdles, as presented by Steve, uh, we we have uh, you know the offerings that are, that are necessary to get you through the, the next stages. Now, for the rest of this uh, presentation, I'll focus on the development section. I will refer to to some of the the clinical and commercial aspects, but I'll focus on on some of the development elements uh, uh, in in the rest of the, the slide deck. So, so really the key is, is to really leverage the experience um, of a partner um, that can offer a really mature platform uh, which is built uh, that allows for easy transition uh, into a predictable supply chain so that you are getting the product uh, if and when you need it. Um, so, so this development process, uh, these solutions that we're looking for uh, to, to create this new therapeutic is really critical um, first step in moving into some of the clinical trials and commercial production. So our capabilities um, truly demonstrate an end-to-end -end service offering uh, from DNA to, to patient, uh, and, and that's really bounded by you know, the foundations of, of quality. Um, so if I was to kind of now focus in a little bit on the process development optimization optimization side, once you come out of that discovery uh, piece, uh, we're, we're really focused on uh, the process development elements um, of, your, of your molecule. Um, so that includes things like cell line development, cell culture uh, customization. Uh, there could be certain analytical aspects that, that we want to look at, whether it's related to characterization or some post-translational modifications or it could be to do with scale up or tech transfer and, and uh, in-process monitoring, um, as well as uh, finally you know, generating some material, whether that's it's for that top study or reference standard. Um, and these are really important factors as we now embark on this journey um, of bioproduction and move into both your clinical trials and, and hopefully uh, into that commercial launch. Um, at Thermo Fisher Scientific, uh, spe specifically within the pharma services, uh, we have these world-class uh, product capabilities to, to really drive you there. These capabilities um, are, are definitely industry-leading um, and end-to-end. -end. Um, and, and what I mean by that um, is that we have been extremely patient-centric in, in delivering over 160 molecules, um, over 20 years of, of manufacturing experience, uh, really compressed into uh, some of the capabilities and service offerings that, that we have to offer uh, to you as, as our customers and, and ultimately to our patients. Um, it's truly end-to-end -end from development to manufacturing um, for both DS and DP as you can see on, on this right hand side, uh, moving from both um, material packaging, distribution, and, and ultimately logistics uh, for both clinical and commercial. Um, and that has really uh, paved the way uh, for a, a lot of success uh, for, for some of the molecules that we have developed uh, for our customers. So you're not alone when it comes to evolving the R&D pipelines on, on biologics. Um, here we see uh, some market projections um, as well as um, how we've gotten to this point. 
with with a CAGR of 11.4 percent, right? This this pipeline, you know, continues to be extremely strong, um, even during COVID times. Now, while there there is a wild di uh, wide diversity of molecule types, um, almost 40 percent in that pre preclinical phase revolves around monoclonal antibodies. Um, and that's definitely one area that I wanna to try to help uh, target today it is around these monoclonal antibodies. Um, when we discuss development, uh, the monoclonal antibodies certainly provide some baseline on, on timeline and speed. Um, but with changes in molecular complexity, as you can see here on the right-hand side, whether it's things like ADCs or fusion proteins, uh, by specific antibodies, um, we, we can use that uh, platform that we've developed for monoclonal antibodies as a basis um, to, to further evolve uh, the, the scopes um, so that we can explore greater design spaces um, as a way to de-risk your CMC activity. So, um, so even though this presentation will focus uh, specifically on the, the development and, and MAB side of things, I think the other 60% uh, we can certainly tackle with you as well, uh, based on, again, the, the capabilities and, and, and experience that we have gathered uh, throughout our 20 years of experience. All right, so so then now that, so, so let, let me pull you back to, um, to what we have discussed so far, which is, now that you've started your engines on, on discovery and, and working with GNUT to generate those first pieces of asset on the construct and, and on the molecule specifically, your next challenges will likely be uh, on that, that first in human. You know, how quickly can you get into first in human um, and the speed into the clinic, as well as deliver, delivering a robust and, and uh, productive process into manufacturing. So, so as you move along this path, as you get into clinical and commercial, uh, there's a certain demand um, that, that is required and, and certainly ensuring that you have a process to meet those demands um, is gonna be critical. This now puts the spotlight on, on things like cell line development, process development, and potentially that scale up pilot scale uh, as, as uh, paths that will now fall on the critical timeline if you're thinking about speed to clinic. All right, so then speed can be uh, formulated in a number of ways. Uh, at Thermo Fisher Scientific, our service offerings are, are, are uh, being modernized uh, with the latest technology and automation. Throughout the various uh, functions of development, we have invested in advancements uh, in developing new technology and automation uh, that will uh, take, take us there faster. Uh, so, for example, uh, if we, we, we look at, you know, some, some of the automation and latest technologies that we have invested in, we start with cell line development, uh, a really targeted approach uh, utilizing microfluidics and OEP technology for single cell cloning. Uh, moving into some of the process side where we have the AMBER-15 um, as well as TCAM robotics to really facilitate that both to facilitate both the upstream and downstream process development um, at, at the smallest scale. And then uh, that the, the process is, is, and the cell line, uh, I should say, is, is complemented uh, by analytical uh, and characterization foundations through uh, the multi-attribute method. And, and that's using a workflow that leverages uh, LCMS methodology uh, to obtain uh, product quality attributes such as uh, glycans and, and charge variant data um, to, to now really shine a light on, on product quality uh, as you move into uh, bioproduction. If I was to kind of take one example, um, let's focus back on uh, the, the Beacon platform. As mentioned, the, the Beacon platform is a, is a microfluidic system that uses OEP technology, so optoelectrode positioning, um, and it uses light to, to help us uh, with single cell cloning. Uh, single cell cloning traditionally is done through limiting dilution, but with the beacon, we're able to now uh, use, um, now able to seed cells into a microfluidic device and then sort the cells uh, based on monoclonality. Uh, if you look at the schematic on, on the bottom, uh, 
the, the instrument is on the left uh, with the image in the middle showing how we're using OEP to, to channel cells uh, into uh, what's, uh, what's called these nanopens, so, so channels within the microfluidic device. Um, and then we're able to assess both growth and productivity uh, over a, a, a five-day period. So, so this has uh, introduced a um, significant amount of automation as, as well as modernization to the, to the way we, we deal with cell line development and to the way we introduce a cell line uh, into the, the bioproduction pathway. So realizing speed to IND or IMPD um, is uh, not just uh, accelerating uh, the, the platform. Um, the Quick to Clinic offering is, uh, is our offering to, which uh, has gone through careful uh, construction and, and integration of a number of things. Uh, certainly the first one is around the workflows. Uh, uh, it's, it's around the beacon, it's around the amber systems uh, and the miniaturization that we're able to, to get out of that workflows, um, as well as the analytical methods. Um, so, so as we develop the, the, um, the molecule and the process, uh, that there's understanding of the process that's required through various analytical methods. But I think, you know, what's more important um, is the robustness of that platform. Uh, with over 80 PD programs since 2017, um, and now a revamped uh, XP Choice Choice cell line, which I'll I'll talk into, I'll speak to a little bit more detail in subsequent slides, is really getting us to to the productivity that that we're looking for, um, and then also leveraging uh, the process development experience that we've had uh, through those programs. And this is then combined with assessing risk. And, and you'll hear me talk about risk throughout this presentation, uh, which is really critical as, as we, uh, we're thinking about uh, moving to that IND or IMPD. So, so we talk about timelines, we talk about um, accelerating, we talk about speed. Um, so this is our quick to clinic 2.0 timeline. It's an accelerated and optimized start to finish workflow uh, that, uh, as you can see, draws on a number of parallel activities. Um, we have taken a really careful approach to, to identifying what's on the critical timeline um, and then optimizing the workflow accordingly. Um, and this is the end product of that approach. You can see that some assumptions are made uh, through the workflow, uh, but what's truly impressive is that this is not just completing a GMP batch um, at the end. It's integrating the PD uh, to the tech transfer as well as the GMP operations. And finally, uh, we're able to release your DS and DP within that time frame. Um, and this is all because we are with you every step of the way to, to really get you closer to that IND or IMPD submission. So, so now I have a, a poll question for you. Um, so if you have a large molecule in R&D or preclinical, when is your IND or IMPD milestone? Give you a couple of seconds to, uh, to go through that. Okay. So, so moving along then, having seen the, the timeline, I'm sure by now you're wondering how are we addressing some of the risks um, and the, with, with the amount of concurrent work. Uh, mitigating predictable risk is certainly embedded in, in this offering, in the quick to clean uh, offering. Um, and you know, there are three key pieces. Um, our approach is really leveraging a well-characterized cell line, uh, which is coming up next. Um, that will help reduce inherent risks uh, and, and failure points as we move from discovery to bioproduction. Um, and then it's, a, it's about advancing our platforms. Uh, so we have invested um, heavily in, into developing this platform uh, that really is able to, to pull together the, the critical pieces that you need in getting you to that IND.
So then Quick to Clinic 2.0 um, ha has definitely uh, been focused um, on, on a uh, revamped cell line, um, and that being the Gibco Freedom XP Choice cell line. So Steve had mentioned, you know, some of the work uh, that uh, has been done uh, through his group, um, and, and more importantly, uh, the, the HEC-293 cell line as well, the XP Cho, uh, being really uh, critical foundations um, in the R&D uh, environment in, in generating some of these products. And, and now we've really turned uh, the, the transient system uh, into a stable one. Um, certainly for our workflow at the very beginning where we're doing cloning and gene synthesis um, and, and some of the uh, plasma prep work, um, that is supported through our, our gene art uh, entity. Um, and, and really, this is uh, our transition point where we're going from discovery uh, into uh, bioproduction. Uh, what's also uh, really a critical here is that anything that you learn through discovery is maintained, right? Whether it's through vector design or, or other things, uh, that, those are all maintained as we transition to bioproduction. Uh, we don't want to lose any um, of the really critical uh, aspects that you've put into uh, the design of your construct uh, through this initial process. So, so, so this is really um, the handshake that you see uh, going from gene art um, into uh, the farm services. So when we think about the Freedom XP Choice cell line, um, it's the same robust cell line, uh, but, but certainly GMP banked uh, that, that you've used uh, through the transient uh, system uh, has been adapted for high density culture, um, getting to two by seven, uh, to, to um, around two by seven um, uh, or two by 10 to seven cells per mil. Um, it's been documented in literature um, of its uh, rapid doubling times, um, as well as uh, the, the ability to, to, be, uh, to produce uh, a high amount of protein. Uh, as, as you can see uh, on your right-hand side, uh, definitely in the grams uh, range um, uh, between that, that three to four um, uh, range. Uh -huh. And then when we think about uh, the cell line and the stability of the cell line. Uh, we've seen good stability across uh, many of the clones that we've generated, uh, whether it's for MAB or recombinant protein. Um, and certainly uh, we've seen really high quality and, and, and very active protein uh, where, where we're, we're looking through some of the analytical methods. Um, so so, so if, if you take one message away from this slide, um, it's to say that uh, the, the, the cell line, the host cell line that you're using for uh, the transient, um, your transient operations will be the same cell line uh, that you use for your stables. Now, consistent quality between transient and stable clones um, is, is really critical. Um, and, and I think that, um, as Steve had mentioned, uh, certainly for the XP Troas system uh, in the transient format, we've seen gram ranges as demonstrated on the left-hand side. We've also seen very comparable uh, product quality. Here you see some N-glycan uh, data uh, moving from transients to stables uh, with a 400 uh, times increase in scale as well. Um, and, and certainly, uh, while we see some differences, the G0F still remains uh, relatively consistent throughout. And the final piece to, to the Freedom XP Cho, Cho S is the, the regulatory support information. Um, there is a, a, a master file uh, for this particular cell line uh, in the form of a document, docu um, a regulatory package uh, that provides uh, the, uh, the information around the cell line, the history, the lineage, as well as characterization. Um, there is uh, certainly an application data package uh, that's available, um, and then um, uh, the, the lineage, um, as mentioned, um, in, in supporting your regulatory filing. So I would like to take another couple of seconds um, to, for another poll question. Would you like to be contacted by a sales specialist to learn more about the Quick to Clinic solution for large molecules?
hopefully this is an easy one uh, that you can just click yes or no. Give it another 10 seconds. All right, so, so moving along. So just a couple of slides left. Um, now going through the and introducing to you the, the stable system, the stable XPHOS system and how it fits within Quick to Clinic 2.0. Um, we've really laid the foundations uh, for success uh, for your IND or IMPD. Um, so hopefully, you know, you can see that Quick to Clinic um, is uh, formulating the, the, the pieces that are really critical for this foundation. Um, where it combines the process, the analytics, as well as the scale-up strategy uh, with a really robust cell line um, that is available now to, to create your molecule of interest. Um, you know, it, it's certainly through, um, through some of the slides, you, you could see that uh, it's been integrated into our platform. Uh, it continues to be royalty-free or exit uh, fee-free. Um, and, and we, we have a, uh, a significant body of data around scale-up solutions uh, well beyond your IND and IMPD milestones. To kind of sum, sum my section up, um, Quick to Clinic is just that first step um, in, in really getting your molecule uh, past the, the IND and IMPD uh, is, is that first step in the life, uh, the, the drug life cycle. Um, I want to highlight here that certainly pharma services is able to help you go beyond that, um, going from both lab to clinic and then to commercial. Um, so, so we have um, some additional uh, services which um, I'm sure that there will be opportunities in the future to, to kind of share with you. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll ask you to, to complete another poll question. Uh, would you like to talk, talk with a business development executive about your development and commercialization goals? Again, a, a quick and, and easy one. So hopefully uh, you can uh, click a yes or no to that question. I'll give you another five seconds. All right. So let me sum it up um, and I'll try to sum up Steve's section as well if I can. Um, so, so as Steve presented, um, you know, partnering with Thermo Fisher Scientific can significantly speed up your development timelines. Starting with gene synthesis is, is the fastest way um, to screen uh, and uh, um, to screen those clones to, to identify the candidate that's necessary uh, for, for that next step of viral production. GNR services, um, at, through what Steve had presented, uh, can accelerate the, the protein uh, R&D timelines and really simplify your process. Um, and, and I think ultimately what I took out of uh, what Steve had said is, is really help you come up with a solution um, in, in addressing you know, some, some of the challenges uh, as you go through uh, that kind of workflow. Now, while the speed to clinic is one of the most critical goals coming out of discovery, um, it shouldn't be uh, prioritized at the expense of, of other uh, critical success factors. And I, ho I hope that, uh, you know, that risk-based assessment that you saw throughout the presentation um, helps uh, to, to, um, uh, to address that point. And then work with, with things like Thermo Fisher Scientific who can offer seamless scale-up solutions beyond the IND and IMPD milestone. Um, certainly this is uh, this is really critical um, and uh, we, we should kind of ensure that, uh, that there is complete end-to-end -end, uh, for any molecule uh, or any drug that you're trying to funnel through that life cycle approach. And finally, a quick to clinic uh, program uh, for uh, monoclonal antibodies that's designed to take you from transfection to IND in as little as 13 months. It's certainly market leading um, and, you know, we, we balance uh, the, the risks um, to the reward as well. So with that, um, I'll move over to, to that final slide. Uh, just some contact information or any, um, any additional 
uh, information that you need, please uh, reach out. Um, and uh, with that, I want to thank you for, for your uh, attendance uh, to this uh, webinar. Thank you, Steve and Jeff, for your informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Let's get started. Our first question is for Steve. Can we ship clones from another provider for gene art to perform protein expression and purification projects? That's a great question. Uh, the answer is yes, you absolutely can do that. One of the things that we do encourage within uh, gene art services at Thermo Fisher Scientific is the fact that we can do the entire continuum from DNA sequence all the way through expressed uh, and purified protein in-house. So you will get a higher level of service and likely a uh, higher level of quality as well by working with us at Thermo Fisher Gene Art from the very beginning. And one thing that we can do as a result of doing that is at any point in the process, you have the ability to have better control over everything. Sometimes there's a risk in shipping clones in that there can be, um, you know, mislabeled tubes, there can be uh, shipping conditions or packaging that are not up to par that we don't have any control over if we receive it in that way. And if the reason for wanting to do that uh, revolves around pricing, we're more than happy to discuss options to really provide you everything that you need in-house from that sequence design all the way through the purified protein. Uh, so feel free to contact uh, one of your Thermo Fisher partners who you, you work with, and uh, we'd be more, in, more than happy to discuss the different options available to you. Thank you. And it looks like we have time for one more question. Uh, this question is for Jeff. How are you addressing current challenges around raw material sourcing with regards to the quick to clinic solution? Thanks, Marie. Um, yeah, no, no doubt this one's on everyone's mind. Uh, it's certainly a challenging environment right now. That said, uh, with, with this kind of platform approach that we're taking, there's certainly a standard set of, of single use components. Um, and a standard set of resins and, and media that, that we, we would use. Uh, and we're able to really uh, procure those uh, well in advance uh, in preparation for the GMP um, manufacturing batch. Um, and, and sometimes even uh, before, uh, prior to, 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 to that signature. So, so it really uh, depends on uh, where, where we are in terms of, you know, the dis um, the discussions with, with uh, con contractual items and, and things like that, but but you know th there's always you know with with such a uh, changing environment there's there's always opportunities uh, to to go through and and identify the the critical uh, timeline items that that's stopping us uh, from from moving forward. So and then we're always open for that discussion. So um, so so that will be my answer to that, Marie. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you again, Steve and Jeff, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>